I've got basic questions about the Second World War. Okay, what are, well, what are they? Like, clearly, something well, important changed in the well, West well, in 1945. Well, what was that? What's very interesting to me is that, you know, that um, Hitler and, and Stalin were together at the beginning. Yeah, of course. Of it. And when Poland was invaded, Britain said, we will do whatever it takes to restore freedom and democracy to the people from whom it's been uh, denied, <laughs> yes. stolen. And then what happened, and then, Neil Oliver? And then, and then you know, you, you've only got to read any uh, coverage of the Second World, Second World War to know that at the end of the Second World War, Poland was left swallowed whole by... Well, they handed it to Stalin. Uh -huh. So, so the, 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 stated, <laughs> the stated objective... What is that? The stated objective of Britain declaring war it, at the time was well you, you didn't do it you didn't you didn't do that well you and didn't even try and in our country it's illegal to criticize winston churchill he's the greatest hero in you know, and then world you, history and when but you look at the when you look at the murkiness that happened at yalta you know between you know between you know roosevelt and stalin and, and churchill and and the fact that uh you know I, 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 agreements were arrived at somehow where uh Many people who wanted whatever you would call West, the West, they wanted to be the West. They were just allowed to be swallowed whole by the communist bloc. Yeah, to the most violent totalitarian in history. And so they handed uh, these countries. They went to war to protect the sovereignty of these countries that they then handed. And people were being chased back across across specified right. lines, back so, into that. So what is that? Clearly, clearly so, so what, there's it, lying here. So what's yeah, the truth? So you, that we started, we started there because we were speculating about when it all started to go wrong, when the, when the slide towards, you know, neo, anything that ends in ism is the same. If, you know, whether it's fascism or communism or a a any of these things end up with piles of corpses. You, you, you can't get a cigarette paper between these, between any of these ideologies. So it's, yeah. it's important not to be distracted by, by whether or not it's national socialism or communism or whatever. They're, they're all the same. They're good for a handful of people and they're catastrophic for everybody else. Uh, and so clearly, clearly something shifted up a gear in the West, in the middle of the in the, during the Second World War and after, and has been moving faster and faster ever since. And but I, I, I think there's there's been an extraordinary gamble taken now because even even people who were who are in a state of semi slumber like myself were aware of notions like a social contract, you know that. That I was that we as 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 citizens uh, would be represent you know no taxation without representation you know we would be we would have our views represented we would have our liberty defended uh, we would be we would be we would be safe in peaceful countries and in return for that we would pay tax and we would submit to certain otherwise you know onerous restrictions on you can't do anything you've got to be agreed to be policed by consent and, and so on and so on and and that that's okay so there's now a social contract there's a quid pro quo there for people there's a reason for people to 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 comply because there's something in it for them liberty aspiration hope all of that being protected by uh, legislation and a constitution and all and all of that the gamble that's been taken now is that all of that is supposed to is being taken away. Everything that the people, all of the all of the inducements to be law abiding, peaceful citizens, is being taken away. For and and and, and what what do I get in return? Nothing. You're going to get a digital ID. You're going to get central bank digital currencies. You're going to live in fifteen minute cities. You know you're going to have your. We'll tell you what to eat. Your your currency will be programmable, so we'll have complete moment to moment in real time control of everything you do, everything you want to do. Now that's a heck of a gamble for for a very narrow group of people to take with billions of people. Has the American Republic fallen? And is it well, the Republic is long gone. I mean, the, the second so, you allow an intel agency to murder your democratically elected president, as we did 62 years ago, and then sort of ignore that it happened and be like, I don't think that's really what happened. Shut up. <laughs> I mean, like, no, it's not a Republic. If you allow 
unelected bureaucrats to murder the guy that the majority elected? Like just by definition, the system is not what they say it is, obviously. So, but I do think I agree with you 100% and I agree with our, you know, long departed president Dwight Eisenhower that it really was the, the Second World War in ways that I don't understand, but it's demonstrable change the nature of the country, change the relationship uh, between the population and its government. Can I ask you a question that I always think about, but I've, UK specific question. So 1914, the UK, England, Britain, whatever we're calling it, you know, is running the world, you know, and, and doing, I would say a pretty good job, not perfect job, pretty good job putting in railways and spreading Christianity and being kind of pompous, but basically being a fairly benign colonial power as colonial powers go. There's a war, four years, the smartest people in the country are all killed for no obvious reason. The country's really weakened by that war. The United States becomes a preeminent power in the world um, by 1919. So it's a huge loss for Great Britain, I would say the First World War, again, for no real reason. 20 years later, your leaders tell you, got to do it again for reasons that are clearly fake liberate Poland and then hand it to Stalin. That's not the reason, obviously. Democracy is not the reason. And then the country is really like wrecked and the empire collapses and it becomes sad. Is there bitterness about that? Like, why wouldn't that be the, the bitterest thing that ever happened in the history of your country? Are people still, do they talk about that? They brought us into two wars that just destroyed us. All these cool things that we had, this great society that we had, we made the... I think there's a, I think there is a, I think there is a, 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 a a lingering sadness. But what about, about anger? Like your leaders did that there was no reason to join either war. Well, the, peop the, the people, obviously in my lifetime, your lifetime, the veterans of the First World War, they're all gone. Oh, of course. And the, you know, and the, and, the, and the veterans of the Second World War are, you know, the, are the endangered species that they are. There's, you know, they're almost all on, on the way out. And so, and so the, and once, once, the, uh, once the, the people to whom it happened are gone, then that takes something with them. You know, we 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 don't we're only uh, angry with what happened at one remove in a sense, because the the people who really suffered it are gone. But but I hear what you're saying but about. The, I was born 25 years after the and, war. And you, but I mean, it's so could, obvious. You though. could say. I mean, you could say that Britain only became a second-rate power after Suez. You know, which wasn't until 50, 56. 50, so so you you could say that we were for for whatever had happened to us, courtesy of the First World War and then the, the Second World War. It was it was that it was that mm, shit show in in Suez and and that humiliation, you know, with by America that that Britain became a only then. So it's, it's, yeah, it, but it so was say, dead. I it was say, dead after say, you know. I would say it's much. I think you do make me think about something that's not unconnected. I do think that what's happening at the moment, we will not understand what has actually happened here. Maybe in 50 years time, people look back, maybe in a hundred years time, in the same way that I would say, you know, someone who went through the first world war, even if they were experiencing it, even if they were in the Western front or whatever, with the bullets flying and seeing all of the, of the horror of it, they couldn't, couldn't possibly conceptualize the impact and the consequences and the significance oh, of and the way in which you don't living you don't live through a period and know that you might suspect that the world might be changed forever as a result of the period that you're living through but to actually predict what will be the the real consequences in 10 in 50 years time is beyond all of us i think i think it's impossible i think part of why people won't waken up to this at the moment and won't confront it is because it's it's so big what's happening. I think it is going to be like a first world war. Of course. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. We hope you'll subscribe to it. And by the way, you can hit the little bell on there and get notifications every time we produce a video. We hope you'll do that also.